my god. Oh, oh I found the smell. Got up this morning, had a little bit of a smell. Trying to find the smell. Thought it was the trash, wasn't the trash. That was the fridge freezer, wasn't that? Something's dead in here. So now I get to clean it all out, take off the boards, find out the source of the smell. Ah, bad. All right, see what it is. See anything that could be dead? Let's check out the other side. Definitely smell it more on this side than I do the other side. You know, working off the theory that smells drop. And I gotta figure out where that's going, which is the shower area. Gotta wonder if anything crawled up that way. I don't see scratching or anything on this side. Hi, hi. Hi, hi. Bye, bye. Um, bye, bye. You knocked me down, swept my feet off the ground, left me. The floor Hard to resist Got me looking like this Like the one before Cause I must be strong Cause this might go on For long Cause I was wrong Everybody has a 350M and I don't know where your other fuse panel's at besides the one that's inside underneath the pantry area. Right back here. Alright, another great day. Time to find out where the smell's coming from. In the RV this time, we're going underneath. Danny's gonna help me out. I'm gonna take off the bottom, see if something died in the underbelly area, which is now the last place I could think of to look before we actually have to get into more of the pipes and everything else. So I already checked all the pipes on the heater, the heater coil, and all the vents going in. No smell there. So this is now the next step. Here we go. One, two. Thank you, sir. You ready to do this? I am ready. I got Danny cam ready. Yes. But, well, Danny helmet cam ready. <laughs> I'm gonna start unscrewing this side over here. Mm -hmm. Your job is gonna be keeping it up, okay? okay? On that side, just keeping it up. Woo -woo -woo. And then Abby, yeah. I'm gonna then start coming over here and I'm gonna start unscrewing over here. And it's gonna be your job to keep this part up, okay? Why oh wait, Abby, get up. Is mama still there? I'm right here. Hey. What's your head, Abby? That's not, no, 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 you can lay down. <laughs> Okay, Abby. Ow. Abby, you can move. Mm. Abby, you're good, Abby. Yeah. 
Nope. Nope. You shouldn't have to. Rotting, that's probably what's gonna smell. Oh, I found the smell. Yeah, that is the smell. Oh. Found the smell, it's underneath. Man, that's that's some soaking wet. Insulation. Insulate like soaking wet too. Yeah. Went to get new insulation. But I'm gonna get under there with the flashlight and see how far back it goes to get wet. Hi. If I can even tell. How much is that? that I don't know. All the way I don't know. I gotta. Man, I got. I don't want to leave it open like that because then, like, you know, if the mice, like, that's a ramp for mice to come in. Yeah, I know, but I can't put it back up. You know what I mean? Like, I'm gonna have to look at dropping the whole thing. Yeah. The whole undercarriage. Mm-hmm. And, and just all, the all new insulation. Smell vision is the worst. Smells like strawberries. Exactly. And now Saturn. Pine needles. Oh man, this is great. Woo. Especially if it's like a collection of fart vines. I can't I can't see where there's any water spots or wet spots anywhere in the bottom part where it could have came from. So anyway. So I'm gonna just keep pulling it out until I figure it out. Time for good news, bad news. Good news, nothing died. Bad news, got a leak in the black tank. So we're gonna fill it up with water. Try to see if we can't find out where it's coming from. Also another bit of good news. Found a hook under here. Right there. For a dog leash. All right, day two of the clog. The, uh, found out more information as far as what's going on. And the snake didn't work. Sex snake wasn't gonna work. Uh, it, it pulled up some stuff. Uh, after doing more research, there's a pyramid something. Uh, anyway, so that's what's clogging it. So the little I get isn't gonna change anything. So researching, I found a way to get it. And it's one that you have to get to the root. You have to get to the bottom of it. And for that, you get a five foot, three eighths inch, uh, plumbing pipe and on the front part here you're going to connect it in and then basically what I did was I just Frankenstein it until I can get to a hose nozzle with an on off valve switch and what you're going to do with this is you're going to jam it into the bottom into the toilet all the way down you're going to get past that gunk and everything turn on the hose get the water running into the black tank and then you're going to slowly raise it up and kind of work it back and forth you know move it around jiggle it five six ten minutes however long it takes really uh until it starts cleaning out everything around it because this kind of a clog you need to get from the bottom up to the top and so it's a it's not a permanent fix uh, from things i've read on it it's like a band-aid it'll keep you running for a little bit but the same thing might happen again so we are going to change what we use to dissolve the tissue because in my mind it's just not working right something else is when we were detaching and you know i'm flushing out the black tanks and everything like that underneath because of the you know having to change out the uh, insulation underneath and everything i realized that our holding tanks dip in the middle part lower than where it comes out uh the the exit so I'm going to start also now waiting until I hook up to the truck or at least raise the, the front up some so the RV is tilted you know, backwards so I can make sure whenever I'm filling up the black tank that it's getting everything on that bottom and everything's going out you know, the way it's supposed to go out. 
and then after I make sure everything is clean, clear, and everything is out of there, then, uh, you know, I'll, I'll add the water back in, add back in the, the chemicals to break down the toilet paper and things like that. So, uh, tomorrow, oh, also when you're using this, have to be hooked up to a sewer because you have to have the black line open because you're going to be adding a lot of water and it's hard to figure out, you know, how it's going to go. You know, you're going to have this kind of a, a stoppage when you have water that's staying on the top and it's coming up and then when you jam this down and you start adding water to the bottom well it's not going to send the water up anymore because of that blockage that's going on so uh it's it's going to work it's got to work and i will find out tomorrow when i go to hook this up and then take it in after i get done with the problem after i figured out the problem and and solve this problem this part of the problem then I'll drop the, the front back down. I have, you know, I have the, the cleaner, PVC cleaner, PVC cement again. I'm gonna go back underneath uh, on the tank part. If I can't find where it's it's leaking from, I'm just gonna clean it all, uh, all the connectors. I'm just gonna re-cement all the connectors and hope, you know, that it just doesn't happen again or that I've at least sealed it or, or did it properly. Then I'm gonna go out, measure, go out and buy new insulation for underneath. And then put it all back together and hopefully be good enough for, you know, another trip here in a couple days. So keep you posted on current events and let you know how tomorrow's gonna to go. All right, ta-ta for later. We opened up the whole underbelly to let the bottom dry out and then cleaned it up. We put in new insulation that was better quality than what was taken out. I did not video cleaning out the black tank, even though now looking back, I wish I had, because it would show how you must move the plumbing tool up and down to really break up the pyramid in your black tank. Replacing the under protective sleeve is a pain, and you'll need at least one other person to help you pull it tight for the screws to line back up. Well, it's a good day for truck day. Off to go get a new, Thanks. power for the engine. Same thing I had in the 2500. Um, after not having it in towing, same engine, bigger transmission, sure, heavier truck, sure. But I, I noticed a difference. Also, I'm not gonna go with airbags this time. I think I'm gonna try to get some different, uh, different shocks uh, just to replace the ones that are already in the back. And that'll help out keep the onboard air just for tire inflation, which I still have to put on the truck. Then it's going to be tunnel cover. This is Josh. Hey Josh, this is Chad. How you doing this morning? Hey, good, how are you? Not too bad. Um, I'm on my way up right now, but I'm about 40, uh, 50 minutes out. But I was wondering, do you guys also order Timberins for the suspension parts in the back? In our 2019 GMC Sierra 2500, we installed airbags to help us with the towing. However, this time around, we went with Timbrins 
Because of the ease of installation and all the reviews showed it still provided a great ride no matter if you were towing or not towing. Of course, we went the easy way of installation by using some extra wood pieces we had lying around and the weight of the truck itself to put the timbrens in place. Now, even when towing the Grand Taj Mihal around, the bed is still level. One of the best parts is the cost, is maybe a quarter the cost of the airbag system. However, we still have future plans of reinstalling our air compressor for tires and also for my future air horn. This is the Derringer, the Banks Derringer that I was talking about. I already put in. Now you're gonna wanna get thermal paste and you wanna buy extra because the amount that comes with it is really not that much, but you wanna make sure that you kinda of cope, really put it in there because it's gonna get hot and used. So the Derringer is gonna wire down, go under Beneath the firewall, it's going to go down under the firewall and it's going to pop out up in this area. I have it coming through the truck here, so it comes from underneath there, pops out, follows this line, this hose line, comes back in. There's already a groove there for the truck, comes in and then plugs into your OD2, which then you have this part up here. The Derringer cable's here. I have it running along the same hose line that goes to the other side. I have it coming down this way, following this line, which has it going under here, and it connects to the bottom of the Derringer there. These cables here, we'll replace these ones. There. There we go. This here is called the I-Dash, which is what's plugged into your OD2 sensor. Start the truck up. Now, the good thing about the I-Dash, even if you don't have the Derringer in your motor, you can still use the I-Dash. It's just, it's telling you, the levels you have and what you have. Now you can change this around and configure it multiple different ways. So engine oil temp, that's what I have. Uh, so I know going up hills, steep hills, I'm able to keep an eye out on that and it'll start flashing red if it gets above the parameters that I'd set. Fuel level, so all these, right? Load, my def level, things like that. So let's see here. You can go over here. Now, gauge layout, like I said, you can change your gauge layout. You can select different things. It doesn't have to be what I have on there. You can log your data. Uh, so if you're trying to keep track of, of your measurements and things like that, I, mean, I don't go too far into that. If you have a check engine light, you can go to diagnostic. Now, you can check your vehicle. You can check just the I-Dash itself. And you can check the Derringer. So Derringer, no faults. So, we'll go back. I-Dash, it's good vehicle check vehicle codes you can clear the codes you can check your emissions injector rates a lot of things a lot of things i don't deal with uh outside of what i already have up here is the only things that i figure i kind of care about or or am tracking on my own now if you want to know more about the derringer and the stats and the things you can do with it i'll leave a link to their website down in the comment section I like it. I've always liked it. Um, I also like their customer service. They've been great when I've had questions or potential problems with it. So, which happened on my 2019 and they actually had to send me a new one. But there was no problems and no fuss about it. The great, great company. So the Banks Derringer also comes with six levels of power. Maybe they'll, they'll say it that way. But you have your stock level, which is the engine's normal, running normal. Level two, level three, they say level three is best when towing. That's the level you want when you're trying to come off of an on-ramp uh, to the highway and you need to pick up speed. For your max, you got four, five, and then six. Level six is your max horsepower slash torque. All of these help out with 
uh, your, your fuel. But definitely check out the link below and learn more about it. You know, do your own research. There's other systems that are out there. Banks isn't the only one. It's just the one that I like and that's the one I would prefer. The other thing I do like about Banks is they also have your air intake for the motor. They do pipes and also this is 100% compatible and good with warranties. It's California uh, approved. Do your research. I did my research. I like this. I like the fact that I can get another air intake like I did from them with our 2500. Uh, now, might also look for pipes, but they show before and after dyno test on all their products as well. That's our setup. That's what we have. That's what I like. And I'm glad I have this in.